Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, this is Attorney Nick Caracal and we will have a very interesting topic today because maraming kababayan natin na gustong pumunta ng Amerika. So, uh, our topic for today is applying for a U.S. tourist visa, uh, commonly known as the B1, B2 visa, and we'll talk about how you would assess your chance of approval. So, um, Again, the topics that we will be talking about here is basically helping you increase your chance of approval. And as we go along with our presentation, you could actually type your questions on the comments um, comment section and I will try to uh, respond to them uh, as we go along. Uh, okay, uh, Ma'am Teresa Peña from Cagayan de Oro, uh, thanks for joining in, Ma'am. Uh, so we have a very long lists of topics here so i will just start the conversation uh first i subdivided this uh presentation into four uh the first few minutes we're gonna talk about the basic concepts and tips on how you're gonna prepare your your application and then we will go over very quickly the application procedure kasi ang daming nagsisend sa amin ng message as to how to apply for the tourist visa and uh, tourist visa applications can be done online. Generally, you don't need a lawyer or an agency if you could actually have the time and the patience to uh, apply uh, for the or submitting your DS-160. And in the third part, uh, we will talk about how you're going to assess your chance of approval. And then the, for, uh, the final portion will be talking about next steps, whether you are approved or you're denied, what would be the, what do you expect uh, at, the, at the embassy. Okay, and I just would like to make a very quick disclaimer here. So, attorney's discussion does not serve as a specific advice to your specific question and does not create attorney-client relationship. So, you would actually see me in a bit, uh, but I'm actually just trying to focus on the materials for now. And uh, again, good evening and thank you for joining us. Hi, James. Again, thanks for joining, watching. <clears throat> okay. Um, basic concepts and tips. Uh, generally speaking, a tourist visa application is now commonly known as the B1, B2 visa. Uh, B1 refers to business applications and B2, uh, this applies generally to tourism applications where you come to the United States to actually have a vacation, see relatives and friends. Uh, a B1, B2 visa is a non-immigrant visa. It means that your intention of coming to the United States is only temporary and that you have a lot of reasons to go back to your home country uh, to pursue uh, because you are a resident there or a citizen there. Uh, there is, you will hear some concepts like immigrant intent. Uh, what it meant is that the time that you will appear for interview at the embassy, uh, the officer already had the presumption that you are applying even for a B1, B2 visa, but you really intended to stay permanently in the United States. And that actually explains the reason why there's a very high, high rate of uh, denials at the embassy because, again, it is the obligation or the responsibility of the applicant to actually change the mind of the officer that, yes, your, your visit to the U.S. is only temporary and that you are coming back to your home country. Uh, the third concept that I would want to give you is that an application for a tourist visa is discretionary on the officer. So don't feel bad if you will be denied. Uh, we'll talk about that. But again, the purpose of our presentation today is to increase your chance of approval. Okay, uh, again, I will not show my face for now because uh, I know that my slides will be more important than my face as of this point. Uh, for people who have not had um, tourist visa application or any visa at all at the U.S. Embassy, uh, this is basically how the format looks like for a U.S. visa stamp. Uh, it only matters where uh, the, the, the content of your visa stamp actually shows the issuing post name, whether uh, this is the location where you appeared for the interview, and then your full name, middle name, and it will actually show you the type of visa that you were approved of. And then it shows your birth and then the date of issue as well as the expiration date. Uh, I just want to emphasize that because 
the relevance of the expiration date is that you can use the visa to enter the United States up to the last day of that expiration date. So uh, for this for purposes of ex uh, discussion, uh, this particular visa stamp shows expiration of April 23, 2022. It means that this person could actually enter the United States on that date and still be able to allow entry. Uh, don't confuse that, that as soon as you enter the United States, you are generally given six months stay and you could actually apply for one-time extension of another six months where you could actually stay on your B1, B2 maximum of one year in the United States. After that, you either have to go home or you have to apply or change for another visa type. Okay, so wala pa akong nakikita ng questions dito. Uh, but again, type your questions here. I will respond them as we go along with our presentation. Uh, at the embassy interview, generally speaking, everyone should attend an embassy, in-person embassy interview. But unknown, un unknown to many, there are exceptions to the rule. Generally speaking, children 13 years and younger are not allowed, are, are, are not required to have in-person interview. So you could actually just send in their application. But uh, for parents who are applying for a tourist visa, your children have a higher rate of approval if you're going to bring them with you at the interview. Okay, so that's a tip. The first tip that we're going to uh, give today. Uh, 80 years old and older are generally not required to attend. Uh, but then again, if you if you are applying yourself, might as well bring them if they are healthy and in good condition enough to be with you at the embassy interview. Uh, renewals. So if you've been into the United States and you have not violated the terms of your tourist visa, you can just send in uh, through the lockbox uh, your renewal application and you have a very good chance of re uh, approval if you did not violate the terms of your tourist visa application. Uh, still continuing with the embassy interviews, everything is recorded. So don't say anything that would hurt you 10 years later or 15 years later. Uh, so take your interviews seriously. Generally speaking, the officer will not look into your documents, meaning even if sa dami-dami na mga documents na dinala mo, they may not ask for supporting documents. They will actually look into your DS-160 application online as the basis of their decision. And that's the reason why I encourage you to, to stay with me up to the end of this presentation because I will be giving you some tips on how to fill out those uh, DS-160 application online. Okay? Submission of falsified document or information is equivalent to fraud. And a fraud has the consequence of either you will be banned for four years for misrepresentation with the approval of a waiver or you can, depending on how grave the misrepresentation is, you can be banned forever. A uh, medical exam is not required on a tourist visa application. Okay? Uh, so, dahan-dahan lang tayo kasi medyo marami tayong pag-uusapan. Still, uh, I will start now with tips on increasing your chance of approval for the tourist visa application. So, wear formal business attire. Okay? So, don't wear jeans or rubber shoes. Again, a tourist visa is discretionary upon the officer and impression of the officer upon you matters a lot. So people who generally wear formal business attire, uh, the officers would look at that as if you are very serious about this application, that you deserve to be in the United States, and you the, that, that type of impression would actually help you getting a better assure, uh, approval of your tourist visa. Hi, Mom Jean Oliver. Thank you for approving my request to post in Lefora. Arrive early, so never be late on your tourist visa application. Uh, the U.S. is very known uh, of being strict as far as time in terms of uh, visa interviews. General rule, if the question is answerable by yes or no, then just answer yes or no. This is not the interview that you would want them to be impressed of your communication skills. This is, um, this is an interview where you would want to believe the officer to believe no matter whether you have a bad diction or bad grammar but for as long as you'll be able to convince the officer that your visit to the united states is temporary 
and that you have a lot of reasons to go back to your home country, you have a better chance of approval. Okay, so wala pa namang nagtatanong, so I just go along. And then, uh, so explain things when you are being asked to explain. So kung wala namang nagtatanong na officer, then just answer yes or no. Uh, mahina daw ang volume. Uh, okay na bang volume ko ngayon? Sorry, I'm actually situated. Can you tell me if the... Okay na ang volume? We're good? Okay, so I will just... I will just uh, as soon as I read if okay na or mahina pa rin, I will just presume na okay na. Um, third, it's okay to say, can you please repeat the question or rephrase your question? Kasi minsan, uh, the, how the embassy is set up is parang bangko lang. So parang nakatellers lang yung, parang te bank tellers lang yung mga officer. So, and they are actually enclosed in a glass. So, if you don't understand the question or if hindi mo naintindihan, it's actually okay to uh, mahina pa rin po. Sorry for that. Uh, just give me a second. Is it good now? Uh, Camille Palomo, is it okay for somebody to accompany a senior citizen applicant and can that person repeat the question to the applicant in case the senior citizen didn't understand it? Yes, uh, there is actually what we call uh, requesting for accommodation at the U.S. Embassy because either the applicant has disability or is of old age, it's okay to request for accommodation. And then kung ang, ang, in -accom ang gusto mag-accommodate is a relative, then it's okay. You just have to let the embassy know. Uh, okay ng volume. Thanks, Shai Shai. And again, uh, that's one of the tips that we would give you. Number five tip, be confident. Maintain eye contact with the officer. Again, maintaining eye contact to the officer, you are giving the impression to them that, hey, number one, you are telling the truth to them and you have nothing to hide. And that, again, increases your chance of approval. At nagtatakala ko, daming may mga nag-galit, nag, 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 uh, angry, icons but anyway six be honest right because again was as what i said uh everything that you say or everything that happened at the embassy are uh, is recorded so and i have had attended a lot of green card interviews where the applicant has been confronted with what they sa told the officer at the time of their uh, tourist visa interview uh, or any other pri prior interview so make sure that you are very honest, but not forgetting the fact that just if the question is answerable by yes or no, just say yes or no. So don't say much words after that. Uh, so I have some questions here now. Uh, shy, shy, kung ang reason is mag-attend ng conference. Okay, we're gonna over, go over the purpose of uh, the visit mamaya. From Lenny, my daughter is a Philippine registered nurse currently working in her MA. What is her chance of getting... Okay, we'll talk about that later too, ma'am. Um... Helsi Karyaga. So, ang daming, ang daming nanonood natin ngayon. So, I may not be able to read all your messages and we may not be able to complete because I only scheduled this for one hour. Uh, so, forgive me if I will not be able to read all your questions. From Dindam, good evening, attorney. Is it, uh, is it needed to have an invitation? I will answer that question later, but a very good question. Okay, what documents we need to bring? We will cover that also. Okay. Uh, tip seven number uh, number seven tip make sure that your answers coincide with what you wrote in your ds 160 application that's why later when we go over the application process make sure before you submit your ds 160 application or before you even close the uh, your computer that you print out your ds 160 application one of the noted reasons of denying your application is that your answers to the officer uh, doesn't tie with uh, what you wrote in your DS-160 application. So now maybe it's time to show my face here. Uh, okay, so I am now on number eight. Avoid unnecessary words. So if the officer is asking you a question, just answer the question straightforward and don't uh, make side comments of of course. And because again, uh, these are this is a very formal interview. Okay, plan your trip. Um, 
again, you are applying for a tourist visa application where uh, the main purpose is to visit the United States. So when you attend your interview, at least plan ahead what your activities are, what look, uh, what cities, uh, states are you planning to go, and how long is uh, the ju the duration of your trip? Because you just don't go to the embassy and say, "Hey, yeah, bahala na, uh, bahala na si Batman." No, so you really have to plan your trip. That actually gives the impression to the officer that yes, your purpose of coming to the United States is very specific and very temporary and that you are coming back to your home country to, res to resume to your old life. Uh, again, just don't go there without a plan. Uh, so you should know. Uh, I have had uh, a potential client before where her intention of coming to the United States is to see snow, but she intended to stay in California. Well, e when she talks about California, it's actually talking about south south part of California where there is snow. There is no snow. Uh, so if the officer hears that, it's very obvious that that applicant didn't know about what he's talking about and that chance of approval goes down. Uh, Shai, Kong, okay, I'm just reading some questions here. From Bobby Mendoza, yung pagpunta po namin is attending a conference. Ano ang requirement? I will go over that requirements in a bit. So we don't have to bring many documents during the interview. I uh, hold on to that question, Mom Imak Reyes. Uh, so we have this presentation laid out, uh, organ um, or being organized, so we are we don't get confused. Uh, indicate shorter travel duration. So when you actually f as, uh, fill out your DS one hundred and sixty, don't put uh, your intended travel as six months. Though generally speaking. When you visit the United States, the officer at port of entry will give you six months duration. But when you send out your application, you can just put one month or three weeks and then plan ahead that trip because you could change your mind of extending your stay if the officer gives you that uh, extended stay in the United States, right? Uh, the moment that you put in six months as your plan travel, it actually raises red flags because that's too long for a vacation. So if you have work, I don't think or it will actually just create a doubt on the officer whether or not your employer is allowing you to be absent from work for six months. Uh, another reason why we discourage putting longer duration is that because you cannot work legally in the United States, how do you plan to support yourself for the next six months? So for purposes of filling out your application, I think one month, two months duration of your stay in the United States and plan about your activities during the two months would actually give you a better chance of approval okay know your purpose of travel as far as a b1 b2 applic uh, application is concerned the only allowed activities are having a vacation in the in the united states visiting friends and relatives attending training or conferences uh, and again we will talk about the requirements later of what the officer would want to look at if they would uh, as far as these purposes so what i'm saying is if you are applying for a tourist visa the only allowed purpose is that number one it is temporary and that you have to impress the officer that you are going back so having a vacation visiting friends and relatives even attending a friend's wedding is not good enough right so again uh, the officer will look into all your evidences or all, all information you wrote in your ds-160 and they would actually make that decision uh, third tip here, invitation letters are not required. Pero kung mayroon naman kayong nakuha na invitation letter from your friend or from your relative, it won't hurt you if you're going to bring that to your interview. But mali yung, mali yung, it's a, it's a misconception for people to say that an invitation letter from relatives or friends in the United States is a mandatory requirement. No. Uh, you can get an approval on a tourist visa even without an invitation letter but in your DS-160 application they are now requiring you to have a primary contact so you could actually call your friends or relatives to say hey can I use you as my reference in my DS-160 application and make sure that your friend or relative knows what your plans are once nandito na kayo sa United States Uh, my 
Our slides are very helpful. Thank you po. Uh, hello, Ma'am Siva. Okay. Uh, I uh, Before I proceed to the next section, with, which is basically the application procedures, I will just go over some, requ uh, some questions here, hoping that I would be able to answer some of your questions. Attorney, kailangan ba ang show money? Uh, we will go over that in a bit. Lani Lane, Innocentes. Mas madali po ba ma-approve kapag may relative sa US and if family kayo mag-aasika so kaysa individual? Uh, the first question I will respond in a later slide. Uh, kayong mag uh, if family kayo mag-apply kaysa individual? Uh, yeah, it depends daw. Uh, kung kunwari ang kasama mong apply is mga anak mong minors or students, yes, they have a better chance of approval. I would recommend that if you're applying for a family the primary applicant should be the person who has the higher income. So whether it was the mother or the father, uh, siya yung magiging primary applicant. And then yung ibang kasama will be uh, yung accompanying relatives. Uh, they will be placed in one application and they will have this one uh, interview date. Uh, so they will be going, approaching the officer as a group. Uh, so yeah, uh, based on my experience, you have a better chance of approval if you go as a family provided that the primary applicant or at least the parents would be able to show strong ties in the uh, in the home country and we will talk about strong ties later uh, Ria Kanyata can an age out child of an immigrant be given a tourist visa so again it doesn't really matter kung nag age out ka age out means you don't you don't you don't you no longer have a pending immigrant petition but you all go back to the question of whether or not you have established strong ties in the in in, in your home country and i will go over the details of what strong ties means in the later part of our presentation um ayelski uh, karyaga my sister po ako sa us okay lang ba sabihin na may kamag-anak ako sa us you should it's not even an option you have to declare whether or not you have immediate relatives in the United States. And uh, the, the application would even require, uh, would even ask you whether or not kung, uh, kung anong status nila dito, whether they are citizens, green card holders, or non-immigrant visa holders. From Debna, good evening, attorney. Is it needed to have invitation letter? I think nasagot ko na yan. Okay, so we'll go to the next section application procedure okay uh so i actually shown here the link of where you could actually apply your application online again generally speaking you don't need an agency or you don't need a lawyer to actually apply for a tourist visa but what i encourage you to do is learn for yourself what the requirements or procedure in each embassy because an em each embassy could set up their own uh, embassy specific requirements and procedures I've handled a lot of applications in Asia Morocco wherever that is and yes uh, each embassy may have their own set of procedures so make sure that before you submit your application that you check their information in their websites because it's actually given so uh, for purposes of our presentation today I focus my presentation on the US Embassy in Manila so you could actually just take a look at the links I've shown in the materials and um, again, you will be guided by that properly. So I will shift again to the presentation mode because we will be dealing with details here now. Okay, so here's the application process for uh, the tourist visa application. So first, Complete your DS-160 online application. And again, we will go over that uh, in the next slides. Print the MRV slip. So this is actually the payment slip that you're going to bring to the B any BPI branch and pay for your tourist visa application. If B uh, BPI asks you anong purpose, just tell them this is for a tourist visa application. Make sure that you get a copy of that receipt kasi gagamitin mo yan when you already set up your interview. The application fee is $160, so that's about $8,000 plus at any bank of Philippine Island. And then schedule your interview either by calling the embassy or creating an account online. Uh, next is gather the required documentation depending on the purpose of the visit 
then six attend your visa interview so that pretty much capture the whole process that you are going to undergo uh, Micah booking confirmation po from a cruise ship in the US like Princess Cruises po don't po kasi mag work papa ko planning for a cruise ship for two weeks only po we've had this trip back we were approved in Japan po uh, okay thanks for sharing Micah Ninia Faith Diaz, will it affect ba ang tourist application visa if my pending AB3 visa application? Okay, so even if I will talk about this in a little bit, but I would answer the question. Again, a tourist visa application is a non-immigrant visa application. It means that you are telling the officer na your stay in the U.S. is temporary and that you don't have any intention of um, staying permanently in the U.S., Having an EB3 pending application, an EB3 is an immigrant visa application. It means that you are telling the government you are staying permanently in the U.S. as soon as your EB3 application is approved. So there is a conflict of intention here. Chances are you will be denied of the tourist visa. Pero pag-usapan natin mamaya ang element of luck. Uh, Mary Jane Magno, can we travel even our papers already filed to? Uh, Medyo na putol yung question. Omega Borong, hello attorneys, uh, Remy Apol Jr. Hey, sir, uh, kuli ko sa Nestle. From Gemma, attorney, ang mother may visa as multiple entry. If mag-apply ang mga anak at husband, kailangan pa rin ba ng principal or supporting documents? No, if your mother already have a tourist visa, then the other members of the family could, could apply as a group or individually, but in, uh, each applicant needs to prove strong ties in their home country. Hi, Sir Philip Figas. Thanks again for getting my fiancé here. Uh, our pleasure, Sir. Uh, Mary Jane Magno. Again, I think nabasa ko na yan. Nina Celeste Nierva. If di po ba kasal pero may anak, pwede mag-apply as family? Totoo ba pag nurse? No. If you are apply, applying for a family, make sure that you are legally married. Else, then each of uh, the other person could actually apply on his own. And then, it declare na lang niya that you are actually applying uh, or traveling as a group. Pwede yan. Christian Garcia, good day po. Nakaregister po ako sa LA Marathon. Ano pong kailangan mga documents yung kapatid ko po mag-sponsor sa akin? Ah, okay. So, I didn't cover this in my materials. So, I will respond to you. If you are coming to the United States for a specific purpose, uh, in your case, you are attending a marathon, make sure that you have very good documentation that, hey, you were invited to the marathon. And that the marathon activity was fully documented and make sure that you put that information in your ds-160 application online and make sure you bring those documentation at the interview because kung maniniwala naman ang officer na talagang pupunta ka sa marathon and the officer could see that in your physique uh chances are you have a very good chance of approval uh good luck on that paul lewis attorney my chance ba na ma-approve si mother if sakali na mag-file siya ng tourist visa and si Paul ang shoulder expenses. Ah, oh, we're gonna go over that later kung sino dapat ang magbabayad ng application or ng trip nila and how does that affect the chance of approval sa embassy. Okay, uh, hello Ma'am Cora. Uh, need po ba mag-tour muna sa all Asia countries? Okay, we're gonna go over that in the next few slides. Okay, information documents to bring when filing your DS-160 application online. So, hindi pa ito yung pinag-uusapan natin na mag-interview ka. Ito yung pag-fill out pa lang ng application online. So, make sure that you have with you your valid uh, your passport with a valid with validity of at least 6 months or more from the date of your intended US arrival. So, meaning if you intended to come to the United States on August uh, in January 1, 2019, make sure that your uh, visa is valid up to July of uh, 2019 minimum uh, else even if you will have a visa you may be denied entry at the port of entry so make sure that you have a very uh, good length of uh, validity of your passport before you apply or even if you are if you are already approved and then um, renew mo na lang yung passport mo hi Mai uh, thank you for joining uh, Mai is my kababayan in San Isidro Rowena Banyagan, paano po pag annulled na at may pending AB3 application at mga children lang ang declared na dependent? 
Okay. So, ma'am, sorry if I will not ask, uh, answer that question because uh, iba yung topic natin today. But I will talk about EB3 in the next few topics. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, hindi kasi siya related sa tourist visa, ma'am. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Renel Mac, attorney, tanong ko po kung ilang months ang notice of approval priority recorded. Okay, so this is out of topic. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, again, civil documents. If you are married, make sure that you bring the birth certificate, your birth certificate, your spouse birth certificate, your marriage certificate. If you have children, make sure that you bring with you uh, the birth certificates of your children even up upon filing of the application. The reason being is you just want to make sure that the spelling are correct or the birth dates are correct or the place of birth are correct uh, uh, is correct because Pag nagkamali ka and you have a future application, whether it's an EB3, immigrant, or any other types of application nagkamali, then you will have a problem later. No? Kasi of inconsistent uh, application. Uh, Isaria Sernik, can I go to NY while waiting for my petition approval? I have a tourist visa na. Yes, you could actually use your tourist visa if you all, even if you have a pending immigrant petition. Just make sure that when upon entry to the United States, you impress or you convince the officer that your stay is only temporary okay another thing that you need to bring two by two digital copy of your photo because you are going to upload that in your ds160 uh, you also need to bring or at least uh, naka take note information about your vocational high school or college information and this includes kung anong address ng skwelahan nyo kung anong dates ka nag start anong date ka nag graduate anong course mo you have to provide that information. Employment history, make sure that you know about your dates, supervisor names, employer names, addresses, job duties. I will comment on the job duties though because again, a US visa application is a very high standard application. Hindi pwede ang mahiya in dito. Uh, so you have a better chance of approval because there is a question in your DS-160 online application kung ano yung position title mo. So, hindi pwedeng do not respond even if the nature of your work is documentary but if you are actually handling uh, your position is a supervisory position or managerial position, then let the officer know that that is your position or you are supervising 10 people even if it is um, heavily on dealing with documents because it gives the impression to the officer that your job is very important. Um, you could also make sh uh, mention in your application that, hey, I've been handling this uh, position for 10 years now, uh, and I'm doing this, I'm doing that. That also increases your application. I have had a client before, uh, and she applied for a tourist visa application three times, and she's doing very well financially. Uh, she's doing business, and the business is really, really good. The problem is, when I look into the DS-160 that she previously filed, there is no way for the officer to know whether the business was created last week, last month, or 10 years ago. So if either you are dealing with uh, your own business or even if you are employed and you've been in that position for 10 years, 5 years, make sure that you put that in the description of your job position title. Again, magyabang ka because this is a U.S tourist visa interview. So you could actually say, hey, I am a supervisor of this department for the last five years, for the last 10 years, and here's my duties. And that actually increases your chance of approval. Uh, hi, mom, babes. Attorney, twice na deny an aking niece. Will you accept to assist? Uh, still, I'm not accepting tourist visa applications, but I hope that by watching this uh, Facebook Live, he she would get some inputs or tips on how she would increase her chance of approval and we'll talk about on my last two slides ma'am anong gagawin mo pag na deny ka okay uh olive antonio nurse attorney pwede bang mag tourist visa again we'll talk about that being a nurse kung anong chance mo nakaka ba siya on that on my last two slides uh mylene clarion hi attorney i am lpr which is a green card holder Paano ko pag-apply ng tourist visa nanay ko? Kaso ang problema sa application ko, kasal sila ni Papa, eh, nag-apply siya. Di naman talaga sila kasal, pero patay na tatay ko. Ano gagamitin niya na apelyedo? Uh, mom, the death of, kung hindi naman talaga sila kasal, your mom could actually go back using her maiden name. Uh, 
then it should not be a problem, right? Because ang basihan naman is ang passport name mo at saka birth certificate name niya. So, uh, I would presume that when she applies for the passport, ginamit niya ang kanyang birth certificate and that should be the name that she will use in the DS-160. Okay, uh, moving along, right? Travels abroad. So when you fill out your DS-160 online, make sure that you know which countries you've been vis you have visited for the last five years. Kunting hindi pwedeng nakalimutan mo yon because it can be construed as misrepresentation, especially if you've visited some countries which are considered enemies of the U.S. And if you don't disclose that, then that will be a very fatal defect in your future applications. Uh, hello, Imam Ken, uh, Kenjin Ling uh, Waddell. Attorney, may chance ba aking ma-approve ang sister ko kasama ng parents ko as a group? Again, if your sister is already 21 years old or older, then your sister needs to prove that she has strong ties in the home country too. So, uh, again, individual application pag adult na yung applicant. Uh, from Am Chanson, Attorney, Bal we're planning to apply for a tourist visa family po. I am government employee. My husband is an um, American. My sister is an American citizen. Um, okay. So, mom, uh, based on our experience, again, if you your husband is an American citizen, you have a better chance of being approved for a spouse visa than a tourist visa. The reason being is it is your legal right to apply for immigrant visa if you are already here because your visa is immediately available for you. So unless uh, you would inform the officer that, hey, even if my, my, my husband is American, my own stay in the, in the U.S. is only temporary and I have, I have assisted an applicant like that before and we've been approved, uh, it's just a matter of how you prepare your application. Uh, personal information, right? So when we say uh, applicant's information, it actually talks about anong pangalan, birth date, birthplace ng, ng, mo, which is your birth certificate, about your parents, about your spouses, about your siblings. Make sure that you have those information before you even sit down in your computer and fill out DS-160. And by the way, once you complete your DS-160, it's only valid for 30 days, then it will expire, meaning hindi mo na siya ma-open and you will read um, recreate a new DS-160 application again. So make sure that you have those information needed before you start para hindi kayo pabalik-balik. Uh, there is a portion of the application where it talks about security questions. So don't take this portion lightly. You really have to read all the security questions. This is an application and those people who are using agencies, you could not, uh, you could not come back later to say, Nagkamali yan, pero hindi naman ako ang nag-fill out yung agency. It is not a defense. And I have had a potential client last year where her father came to the United States three times na. And then at that time, they are already planning to file an immigrant petition for him, but they just want him to visit for the last time as a tourist. The problem is while they were at the airport, the father, who is actually about 75 years old, were called by the uh, the airline saying, sorry, we cannot uh, put you in inside the plane because the embassy canceled your visa. It turned out that in his application, the question of whether or not he has a criminal record before, he answered no, when in fact he has a criminal record and it was actually the agency's fault. Uh, unfortunately, the visa was revoked and it could be a potential problem even at the immigrant visa application. Uh, Ma'am Judarlene, hello ma'am. Hi attorney, good evening po. What if po mag-expire na ang passport ko next year, mga March, then apply ako ng tourist visa now, pwede po ba? Uh, yeah, so if, you, if, if your visa is expired, just make sure to bring your old and new passport and they will be able to renew it. it there should be no problem. From Carly Bumatay, hi attorney, twice na po ako na-deny. First, 2007 with family group application. Uh, second, 2015, OFW. I'm afraid this October assists me have valid reason again. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about OFWs though. Um, 
it is quite challenging for them because the the rule says that you have to have strong ties in your home country but we have seen a lot of applicants who are working abroad uh, but they were still successful to get a visa to